Look how great this corn is. So I thought I'd do a really simple recipe that showcases this gorgeous vegetable. I love it because it is super sweet. Now, if you can't get your hands on fresh corn like this, of course, you could use some canned corn or frozen corn. This is essentially a corn souffle and I'm going to jazz it up slightly by adding some tuna to make it into a really hearty meal. Now we need to fry some onions and spinach off first so into a large pan we'll add a good glug of olive oil and we'll add a diced onion and I just want to soften this and then I'll add the spinach. We don't want to leave the spinach in there for too long. We just want to wilt it. Now, while that's cooking away, let's prepare our corn. So three ears of corn. The best way to take the corn off the husk is place it flat on your board and then just run your knife around to get the kernels off. Now, you want to get as many of those corn kernels off the cob. And if you have to at this stage, once we've taken all the kernels off, you can lift it up. If I did this from top to bottom at the beginning, the corn would just go everywhere. So that's why I do this. And the second one. And when you're looking for corn, what you're looking for is a nice, deep yellow colour. Not too many blemishes on the corn and tight kernels. Now let's have a look at these onions. They've softened up. Just give that a shake. I'll add another splash of olive oil. And now we can add our spinach. So a few large handfuls of baby spinach. And when I add this, I like to add a pinch of salt and turn the heat off. And the residual heat in that pan will cook this so it just wilts and still stays vibrant green. See how it starts to wilt straight away? Great. Now we're just going to let that sit there until it cools down. In the meantime, we'll get on with our corn mixture. So I'm going to place all of these corn kernels into a food processor and I'm not going to add anything else at this stage. I'm just going to blitz it for about a minute or so or until it starts to form into a puree. Look at that colour. See how it's really coarse and pureed. So let's add some flavour now. Mustard, about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard for the binding agent. Also, it's going to help to slightly souffle up our gratin. We'll add two eggs. So I'll crack my eggs into my bowl and we'll add them. And then to bring the whole thing together, some plain flour, one tablespoon. Now I haven't seasoned the corn yet, so we'll add a pinch of salt. And we'll pop the lid back on and blend it until it's combined. Then I'm going to slowly incorporate 300 mils of thickened cream. That has incorporated nicely a lovely pale yellow colour. I just want to taste this for seasoning. Mm. Mm. That corn is so sweet. And this is something about corn and cream that works so nicely together. Also, corn works nicely with tuna. And I always have some tuna on standby for these simple recipes. So two cans of tuna in spring water will drain off the excess, just break it up with your fork and we'll add that. And the second can and in it goes. And this is going to be the base of our gratin. I won't waste any of that tuna. And we'll give that a mix. All right, let's get our gratin dish prepared. So just a two litre gratin dish is great. We need some butter and I'm just going to spread that on the base and the sides just so it doesn't stick too much. It'll just make it much easier to clean later on. And I like the flavour of the butter too in this. Excellent. 
and we can add our tuna mixture and evenly spread it out. I mean, I've used a tuna and spinach combination here, but any greens work nicely for this. I've done this with kale before. Even just leftover veggies that have been fried in some onion work nicely. So just bulk it out the way that you like. Spread that and a pinch of nutmeg now. And to give it a bit of a Mornay feel, I have two varieties of cheeses that I like to add. First is a smoked scamozza. This cheese is so yummy. And as it cooks, it melts and becomes quite stringy. So I'm going to add a few little squares of the scamozza. I'll cut that up. You can grate it if you like, but I like the surprise of little chunks of melted cheese with this. So it's about two centimetre pieces. So that is plenty. And we'll dot that over our tuna. And now for our corn and cream mixture. This just gets poured all over the top. Mmm, decadent. I'll get a spatula. I'm going to scrape down the sides. This will puff up slightly, so ensure that whatever gratin dish you do use, that you do have about a one to two centimetre space from the top. Finally, to make sure that we get a golden top, some extra cheese. This is pecorino. You could also use some parmesan cheese. Now I've preheated my oven to 180 degrees and this is going to cook for about 30 to 40 minutes or until it's really puffy and golden on the top with just a slight jiggle in the centre. Done. This is looking good. It's nicely caramelised on the top and I've allowed it to sit for about 10 minutes so it's not piping hot. And I'm going to scoop out a lovely portion of this. <sighs> Yummy, it smells fantastic. Just pop that onto a plate. Look at that gooey cheese. So good. And I like to serve this with just a really simple crisp green salad. So some fresh leaves here that I've washed, some lemon juice, extra virgin olive oil, and always a little pinch of salt. We'll just give that a light toss with our hands just to ensure that we don't bruise any of our little leaves. And we'll pop that on the side just over here. And there you have it, that is a midweek feast. Everyone is going to love this and it's easy to make. I'm gonna have a taste. Corn and tuna. Mm. They go so well together. The sweetness of the corn, the tuna that's slightly salty and don't forget that scum mozza, yum-o. Mm.